This tutorial will be about MATLAB script files. Scripts encapsulate a series of commands. A script is equivalent to sequentially typing commands in the command window, as in MATLAB will interpret both the same way, but it allows you to build up your code neatly and to test segments. You can also insert comments, which are lines that are not executed by MATLAB. In addition, MATLAB will actively check that things make sense in your code and let you know. Let's see an example now. First of all, we have to create a new script. In the MATLAB command window, this is in the top left, over here, you click on New Script, and that opens up a script over here. I already have several scripts open, and they're all listed on the left panel over here, and we can see the new one called Untitled 5. So first of all, let's save it. We click on Save, and it'll pop up with the directory that we're currently in. And you know that the directory you're currently in is listed in the MATLAB command window, C users ilia documents currently. So let's say that I'm actually not going to save in my documents, but instead I'm going to save in just the ilia folder and we'll see why uh, shortly, just as a demonstration. And let's call it script tutorial. It'll save it with a .m extension automatically. So now we have script tutorial.m as you can see here and in the top over here it says exactly where it's located okay so let's write some simple code let's just plot some kind of a function so we're gonna have a time variable t which is going to be from 0 incrementing by 0 0.001 up to 10 a function x which is going to be cosine of 2 times pi times t and then we're going to plot it, so we'll open a new figure, plot t and x, and we're going to throw in some labels as well, which is going to be time on the x, amplitude on the y, and we'll give it a title as well, um, function plot. Okay, so now, if you want to run this code, we'll click over here where it says run, or equivalently, we can press F5 on Windows, so we'll click run. And so here is something uh, worthwhile. It says that uh, it wants us to change the folder. The reason that it wants us to change the folder is because this script is not located in the same folder as the path that we're currently in in MATLAB. Notice that the path we're in is C users ilia documents, but we saved it one folder up in C users ilia. Therefore, MATLAB can't find this file, but it's given you the option to change the folder to the location where it's actually at so that it can run. And so you pretty much always want to hit change folder. And then it'll run. So it's run, and now it plotted um, exactly what we expected the cosine, and here's all our labels and everything. So this was exactly equivalent to typing everything in the command window itself. So why would we want to actually write things in a script? Well, as I mentioned, first thing we can do is insert some comments. So to keep our code clean and easy to follow, um, in this case it's simple enough, but in general you might want to insert some comments. For example, say what this is, this where we are creating a time variable. Over here we are creating a function. Right here we open a new figure. Then we plot the function versus time. And finally we insert some labels. So you see, I've um, I've commented the code, and now it's clear what each part of the code does. Again, this is a simple example, so it's really not necessary. But in much more complicated examples, it becomes more critical to have these in order to easily follow your code later on down the line. Okay, so one more thing we can do is try different pieces of code by using comments as well. So for example, let's say that I want to try different functions x instead of just this one. So I'll say 
as well, cosine, uh, x equals cosine of 2 times pi times 2 times t, so it's going to have twice the frequency, and let's say also x equals sine of 2 times pi times t. Just two more options. And suppose that um, I want to only use the first one. Well, if I run this as is, it's just going to overwrite x every time, and it's only going to use the last value. So instead, I'm going to highlight these two, and I can click on this button over here, which is a comment, and it says Control R. This is on Windows as well. So what that'll do, it'll comment everything over here. So I click it, and you can see that both of these things turn green, which means that it's now a comment. So now if I run this code, it does the same thing as it did before, because only this value gets evaluated. Alternatively, I can uncomment this, or I can just click on the line that I'm on and click this button over here, which is uncomment or equivalently control T, and it'll uncomment this and I'll comment this one. So now I'm only going to run it with the second alternative. And as expected, I get double the frequency. And one more time for the third one, I get a sine wave. So that's how you can easily block things out in comment and run different pieces of code to try things out. It's, again, it, this is a simple example, but it becomes a lot more convenient when you have more code to try out. MATLAB will also tell you when you make a mistake. It'll highlight things either in orange or in red. In orange, it means that the program will still run, but possibly you've made a mistake. For example, if I erase this semicolon over here, it's going to highlight the equal sign in orange. And what that means is that um, it thinks that something is wrong. So if we hover over it, it'll actually tell us, terminate the statement with a semicolon to suppress the output. Now, this may not matter, and you may want to see the output, so maybe it's not actually a mistake, but something you did on purpose. But in this case, we're creating a 10,000 element vector and that's going to take up a lot of screen space, so maybe this was a mistake. And in fact, it gives you the option to fix it, so you click on this and it'll insert a semicolon automatically. Likewise, let's say that I un uncomment both of these statements, it highlights, it, rather it underlines the first two in orange. And if you hover over them, over either one, it says the value assigned to the variable x might be unused. And it's correct. Right? Because the first time we declare it, we declare it with cosine 2 times pi times t, but then immediately we overwrite it without ever having used it. And again, we do it here. And so we only end up using the last value when we plot. If instead, let's say I'll comment this one so that only this one gets overwritten. If instead I take this and let's say I'll paste it at the end, that error goes away. Because now I declare it here. I use it in the plot and then I redeclare it, but I might use it for something else down the line. So therefore there's no mistake. So those are orange warnings. We can also have something in red if, for example, we, we have a piece of code that just will not run. Let's say that I type something like x equals. It's going to underline it in red because it doesn't make any sense. I haven't actually put anything on the right side. This is nonsense code and it'll be an error. Another kind of error that's common is to have the wrong number of parentheses, especially when you have statements with a lot of different parentheses. So let's say that I want to plot only the first 500 values of t against x. I'll say 1 through uh, 500 against x of 1 through 500. And if I forget to close that parenthesis, this gets underlined as well in red, and it says that it's invalid syntax, possibly a parenthesis is missing. So it tells you what could possibly be wrong. Also notice that it puts these little markers on the side over here, which tells you where you've made mistakes. So let's say we left off a semicolon, it'll get an orange marker here, and a red one here. So it'll take you exactly to where the error is. If you click on it, it'll put the, the cursor at that location. So we can say fix here. If we add one more parenthesis, it should be fine. And that's that. So overall, scripts keep things nice and organized 
and make testing code much easier than typing directly in the command window. And that's the end of the tutorial on using MATLAB scripts.